Long-time viewers of this channel know that I originally reviewed the Advantage 360 Pro back in November of 2022, and that was an overwhelmingly positive review, but not without some grumbles. For example, the configuration software on the Pro version was pretty poor, and there was also Bluetooth connection issues at times. Well, since then, the 360 has had some major changes. Major new firmware has been released to mitigate the Bluetooth issues, new switch choices have been added, the keycaps have got more pronounced scoop on the homing row, and the Advantage 360 has got some new colour case options, like this super cool Stormtrooper White. All the positives I called out on my original review still stand here, so I'm just going to give you a quick overview. The build quality of the Advantage 360 is absolutely top class, and I love the sort of ratcheting three-position tenting solution. Even if it's not as fine-grained as those on, say, the Glove 80 or the Digmidify, it's just incredibly simple to operate and very, very solid. The key well remains super comfortable, lessening the distance between your fingers and the keys and reducing a bit of strain there. And I also like the thumb clusters having different sized keys, even if the height of that thumb cluster compared to the rest of my hand is perhaps not my preference, but more of that later. I'm a fan of the general layout of the 360. I'm fine with no function rows, I barely need it, but that might be a consideration for you. I also like having slightly wider keys at the outer edges, that's something I've got on the, the various boardwalk and promenade boards that I have. I also like the little LED indicators that give you instant feedback for pairing and battery status. And the thing with the 360 is it just feels super solid and dependable in use. There's a lovely deep resonance as you type on the Advantage 360. Now, that's something that some people just do not care about. Um, but I, I really appreciate that. It just feels like such a substantial piece of kit. Let's be clear, this isn't the kind of keyboard to sling in your backpack. This is the kind of keyboard to sit front and centre on your desk and stay there. I criticised Kinesis in the original review for not including a carry case for the 360, but I've subsequently come to appreciate if you want a keyboard for travelling, then with this being one and a half kilos for the keyboard, this probably isn't the best choice anyway. So look, that's all stuff I've pretty much covered in the first review. And the changes that I mentioned at the top wouldn't necessarily be good enough reason to revisit the 360 now, but I have other, more personal reasons. Some months back, I'd opened a dialogue with Kinesis, giving them feedback about some of the problems I'd had with the 360. Most specifically, thumb discomfort after extended use. Now, at that point, I'd been using the 360 and other Keywell boards, like the, the Glove 80, for a number of months, and I'd started to experience thumb discomfort at the end of each day. Now, my working theory here was this was to do with my having my thumb higher than my fingers uh, as I rested on the boards and having that thumb continually poised. Now, I couldn't pin it down entirely to the raising of thumbs in this kind of board, because I still got some discomfort when I used the entirely flat ZSA Voyager. But in that instance, I'd assume that was chiefly because accessing my arrow keys, which is something that I do a lot, was behind a layer that was always a thumb hold away. To try and figure out what was going on, I swapped to using a flat, slightly more conventional board, which was this boardwalk in a HMKB case, or this boardwalk in this other case, or, look, I have a problem. I don't know what else to say. But regardless, within a few days of not using the split boards and instead using a more conventional board with a wider space bar, at the same level as my other digits, my thumbs felt fine. To the absolute credit of Dylan, the head honcho at Kinesis, he was kind enough to get back to me and made some interesting suggestions. Chiefly, whether trying some low-profile keycaps, the sort you get on the Gator on KS33 low-profile switches, would lower the thumb keys to a two to four mil and that might alleviate some of the discomfort. I'll get to the merits of those lower thumb keycaps shortly, but before that, let's just deal with the more general changes to the 360. The Advantage 360 Pro used to only come with Gator on brown switches. Now, I don't mind them personally, but plenty of people are not fans. As the 360 remains a non-hot swap keyboard, it's good to know there are now more stock options. You can go with Gator and Browns, as before, clicky white, Kales, and they also now do this lovely Kale Silent Pink. Now, I think they are a lovely, subdued fuckiness, but most importantly, the quiet signature means you can get away with using your 360 in an office without somebody wanting to kill you, which they very well might do if you rock up using the, the white clicky ones. Now, if you don't mind a little more expense, you can still go the fully custom route and have whatever switches you want soldered in, like the Gator on Oil Kings I have in this one. For a fully custom build, you still need to go via upgrade keyboards. Sadly, unlike the Glove 80, you can't yet order the 360 unsoldered, with the switches in situ but not soldered in, which you then remove and solder in your switch of preference. But these extra switch choices on the 360 are very welcome. If I wasn't hell-bent on trying another 360 as close to what I had in my original 360 board, where I desoldered the original switches and added the Oil Kings, well, if that wasn't the case, I'd definitely be opting for the Silent Pink Linears this time around. As you can see 
with this one as well, you can also pimp your 360 with either this sort of Biker Scout style, a white spray job, or they do a, a matte black spray job version as well. I haven't seen the black one in the flesh, but I think this white one looks really, really good. The only thing you should be aware of here is these special paint job versions lose the little legends above the LEDs that you get on the standard color editions. But I think that's a small price to pay to impress your unique friends. The other change that's happened in the interim is the now slightly more scooped homing keys, similar to the ones on the older Advantage 2. That's great news. I think most people are going to prefer these new or old scooped homing keys. Now one thing I was hoping might get a tweak but hasn't yet is the on off switches. I still feel they could bear being a little more prominent but they're unchanged as far as I can tell. You're never looking at them um, and as they're at the back they're just super fiddly to get your fingers in and, and toggle the, the boards on and off when you're racing to get them on at the same time. Inside there have been some changes, there are definitely different PCB versions but I've queried Kinesis about this and they've told me there's nothing customer facing of relevance. But for the train spotter types amongst you, the PCB version I'm using on this board is Rev 0.8. It's fair to say that a number of people had issues with connectivity on the 360 Pro. I'm pleased to tell you that the only connection issues I got in two months of using this model were when one or both of the sides had completely or almost completely discharged the battery. When that happened, even having charged both sides back up, subsequently getting the two sides to see one another was a bit fraught to say the least and I had to toggle both sides on and off 20 to 30 times until they finally paired. When I did get them paired I wasn't convinced whether that was something I'd actually got right or it was just a coincidence. The official word from Kinesis here is that generally speaking it should be the left hand on first and then the right. However, day to day once the sides are paired the connection is considerably better with this new firmware than I remember with my previous one which had sold on before this newer firmware was available. The January 2024 firmware, I certainly haven't found any random disconnects when I'm switching sources from one computer to another. It's been absolutely solid. So if you've got a 360 Pro already and you don't have that V3 firmware on there, get it on. I would employ you to do that because I think it's much better. I moaned about the official Kinesis software configurator for the 360 in my original review. Well, I've got good news and bad news here. The bad news is the official Kinesis one is still pretty lame. Instead, you can, and you should use Nick Kutsos's updated version, which I've sung the praises of many times in different videos. It's better and more powerful in every way and makes advanced configuration of things like home row mods, combos, macros, all that good stuff, an absolute breeze. Usage is still not as simple as something like ZSA's Oryx or Keymap app, you know, that you use with the Voyager or the Moonlander, where you just plug it in, make your changes, and it gets flashed across. You still need to fork the latest firmware repo on GitHub, hook that up to the con con configurator, and then get used to sort of downloading the files from there and, and dragging them on. That's not great, but the actual firmware setting up of your configuration is much uh, nicer and more capable um, with that alternative editor. Now, a lot of people struggle to decide between this, the Advantage 360, and the Glove 80. Well, let me try and help you out a little bit here. Besides the obvious difference of low-profile um, chocks in the Glove and standard MX switches in the 360, there are some other simple differentiators you should consider. If you want to travel with your keyboard, get the Glove 80. It's got a travel case with it, it's far, far lighter. If you need a function row, get the Glove 80. If you want a very active community around the product, then get the Glove 80 because it's got a very active Discord channel um, that you can get involved in. However, if you want something that feels absolutely solid, the Glove 80 does not come close to this. For a manufactured split keyboard with keywells, this build feels incredible. Uh, the quality, the feel, the sound of the Advantage 360 is just in a league of its own. And it also has those different size keys in different areas where the Glove 80s are all a uniform size. That might be good or bad. Also consider if you're likely to prefer a simpler and more robust tenting solution like the 360 or something more flexible and granular when it comes to mounting options like the Glove 80. But I would say that the only thing that the 360 and the Glove 80 really have common is those key wells. Now that certainly puts them in a small club but as key wells they meet very different goals. If you're stuck trying to decide just try and prioritize your needs and that should guide you to the right choice between the two. Earlier I said I was going to tell you how I got on with the low profile keycaps on the thumb keys. Now this is perhaps self evident, obvious, but I'll call it out regardless. This section is very personal to my personal physicality, so don't base any decisions on your situation based upon my experience here. The vast majority of users, users that are experiencing RSI-like symptoms, seem to be helped by using a board with a key well and the separate thumb clusters. But for me, using the 360 with lower thumb keycaps is definitely more comfortable. 
having the thumbs more in line with the rest of my hand on the horizontal plane is definitely better um, than with the standard keycaps which are just a little bit higher. However for longer sessions I was still finding a completely flat board like this boardwalk was more comfortable than either of the Keywell boards that I use regularly, namely the 360 or the Glove 80. But I'm now coming to suspect the raised thumbs might have been a bit of a red herring, or at least not the main source of discomfort. I think it might be the way I hold my thumb to hit the thumb keys on these boards that contributes cumulatively to my discomfort. Maybe I've just been using flat keyboards for so long I can't adapt, or I don't know. But I fill my hands as I type on each sort of keyboard and notice that with the Keywell boards I tend to curl my thumb in a lot um, to hit the thinner key target. And you can see this here on the Advantage 360 and on the Glove 80. Now compare that to how I naturally have my thumb on the Boardwalk keyboard with the more conventional wider space key. I think doing that over longer periods of time is what's contributing to the discomfort. I suspect that spending a few weeks consciously keeping my thumbs straighter on these Keywell boards will alleviate the discomfort. So that's probably going to be my next experiment. Again, to reiterate, this is no shade to either the Glove 80 or the 360. They're both solid products when it comes to comfortable, ergonomically focused keyboards. I'm certain that the issues relate to how I type rather than shortcomings with either product. More succinctly, there's an error between the keyboard and the chair. The Advantage 360 Pro remains, in my view, one of the best wireless split keyboards you can buy. The latest firmware has greatly reduced the connection issues I used to see. They're now better switches than before, better switch choices. The homing row keycaps have got that nice, better, deeper scoop. And you've now got the ability, the choice, of using a third-party layout configurator, which is far more capable and pleasant to use than the stock offering from Kinesis. Plus, there's now the option of these fancy new case calls, and I can vouch for the personal support you get when you contact Kinesis, which has been fantastic. So. All this means that the Advantage 360 is actually an even better option now in 2024 than when it was when I first reviewed it in 2022. Other keyboards might better it in some ways, but the Advantage 360 Pro is the most premium feeling split keywell keyboard I've used. See you again sometime.